chairman is aware, um, a group from the Georgia Military Affairs Committee that has been um, meeting to discuss internet uh, access in the Moody area. They have looked at uh, USDA funding. Um, Aaron was called to that meeting based on everything that he shared with me in our review of USDA um, requirements for funding, this area is not going to be eligible as I occur, as I understand it currently. Now, um, we will need to do further work with Moody to, to determine this quote, gaming speed, that one of the things that Colonel Conkle discussed with us is a need in that area. <coughs> I think, as we said yesterday, that's already been addressed within the fence, outside of the fence. Um, you know, we still need to know a little bit more about that. And <coughs> we also need to be able to talk with the providers in that area. There is a group from the Chamber, and I assume it's still that same GMAC group that is going to meet with AT&T, or they're scheduling AT&T. Um, AT&T is promoting, as I understand, more of a satellite solution to this issue as opposed to um, the fiber. And uh, as I said, these two areas located uh, on Davidson and then um, the New House have the capability of homes of one gig. And again, that is that cheapest mm -hmm. rate that, that we're aware of. So we need to be able to have some meetings with the providers of that area to determine how best to proceed. Um, I have been asked if there is a, a role uh, of a public-private partnership. Um, <clears throat> that, I think, will have to be vetted to determine if it could be done, and if so, how. Uh, and then we would have to determine if it's with one provider or more providers or so forth. But as I pointed out, that's, while that's a large area, four miles either way, all the way, uh, either side of Bemis all the way, I'm sorry, two miles, four miles for all the way to the county line, um, it's just a very small part as it relates to the need for connectivity improvement in the entire county. Um, the, the, the biggest issue with broadband connectivity is the fact that certainly in the rural areas, the cost of putting that infrastructure in there from the standpoint of fiber uh, to connect each home to the broadband um, is very expensive. The major providers, the AT&T's, the Hargraves, um, Mediacoms, all of those, the first target area they want to go to is a high density area. Not just a subdivision, but I mean where there's a number of homes. So that's the first market that they're, they're going to target and the very last market that they're going to look at and even consider are the more rural less dense communities. So the, the issue that we've got is those individuals are making those decisions about what market area or what areas they serve. And they, at this point in time, have little to no interest in that corridor. I'm going to say north of, uh, probably north of uh, Skipper Bridge Road from there up because of uh, the lower density areas. Um, we do have uh, a provider 
that helped out a lot of citizens and in turn helped out the county just from the fact that they were a, local, a, a contractor that was on Moody Air Force Base providing and pulling new fiber throughout that, their, their infrastructure. Well, they stepped outside of the gate to do a project for Moody as well. If I remember right, it was the Quiet Pines uh, housing unit over there to be sure that they had the proper or as good of internet connection as they could get. Well, at that same time, we had a provider that, if y'all recall, that was from Lake City, I believe, that had that was managing a system that was doing some degree of that part, as well as the Lake Park area. Um, from a financial standpoint, whatever his reason was, he just sent an email out on Saturday and said everything's turning off. Click. It went down. He locked the door and walked away. Uh, nobody had no services. This company, to give them credit, they scrambled around and worked extremely hard to negotiate with that previous owner to be able to acquire those assets. And then as well, we, our part through the county was to help them negotiate through some issues with the utility companies because this individual had not paid his bills to be able to get power turned back on in these facilities so that he would be able to get the signal back out there. Um, I felt like that they really stepped up, did a yeoman's job and some heavy lifting to make that happen. They didn't just turn it back on and then say, okay, start sending the revenue. They actually went in trying to improve the system, make it better, make repairs, and do the things they needed to do, and then also expand it. Well, along those lines is they're still a small startup company. And they don't have, I, I say that maybe not to say they don't have it. I have not had any discussions with them of whether or not they have the resources to how much they're going to be able to expand on that system and grow that system again, putting that infrastructure out there. But I think it warrants some discussions with them along with the other providers to see how we can address as quick as we possibly can the community part. Um, I did bring up the possibility of considering some sort of public-private partnership, whether it be with a provider or multiple providers, not knowing what that big picture would look like, but just again to bring it up to the top so it can be begin to be considered. How can we provide services to those, to that corporate? Um, along with that, in all fairness, as everybody knows and as we've discussed, the technology is constantly changing. And that's one of the fears that even with a public-private partnership that you might develop, you can develop that partnership and you can say, all right, fiber is what we need and let's try to work to get fiber in. Then all of a sudden, technology comes around the corner the next week and what you've done is not, I'm not going to say not any good, but something with low cost on infrastructure may be more, much more cost effective. And there are some things out there. Through the, had a meeting uh, uh, in Atlanta when, at the, birth, the, the day of the bird supper with uh, Jason Shaw and some of those folks at the Rural Caucus meeting. And that was one of the things that they were discuss, discussing is over the state of Georgia it is rural connectivity. How can we improve that? <clears throat> well, they know that it's a, it's a big animal and they know that it's, again, a difficult task to take on, but how can it be done? Of course, they go to throwing out their conversations with people that says technology is this and technology is that. There's actually some testing of technology that will allow a signal not to go down the utility wiring, but to bounce down that utility wire and be able to get the signal into the home. But keep in mind, that's only above ground wire. It don't work for buried infrastructure. That's only when you've got overhead wiring. Uh, so you're limited there, but that could be an option for some of your more really rural areas, uh, like where I live. I've got power poles, and power lines. And I've got.
very limited speed and very limited access to where I'm at because they just don't have the infrastructure there. Um, so I believe that we, we as a commission need to start looking at how we can improve broadband capacity and speed to the citizens of Lowndes County realizing that it is such an expensive project to say that we're going to do it for all the citizens. The reality is, is that we need to concentrate possibly on this corridor right here and see what the options are. Because that plays into our movie support. Now, are we going to improve the quality of life of all the airmen that stationed at Moody? No, because they don't all live in that corridor right there. But a large majority of them do. Um, and so I think that, you know, we need to begin to look at this. The problem is right now is, and the frustration I have, it is really fragmented. It is so scattered out. I have said all along that I really feel like that until um, our federal government and our state government begins to recognize that economic development, as much as anything, is driven by broadband and interconnectivity until they make that decision to start working on that and consider that as part of infrastructure and that in today's society that broadband capacity and broadband speed is as important to a home as electricity is until they get to that uh, it's going to be it's going to be a real problem for rural areas uh, Mr. Pritchard mentioned AT&T for example uh, they bought direct TV and they'll just give you a nod of the head. They're not going to tell you why, but they bought direct TV primarily so you could, so that their rural customers, they can say, well, I'm going to broadband connectivity. How are you going to get it to you? Well, you need direct TV and we'll get it to you through satellite. So they get everything bundled and everything tied up into one. Um, but again, everybody doesn't have that. Not available everywhere. Uh, well, I guess really you might say it is available everywhere. Um, but we still have a need that we need to continue to focus on about how we can address that. Is it cut in? Is it cut in stone? Is it easy to to crack that egg? No, it's not. It's not going to be easy. But I do think that we need to move forward on, as Mr. Pritchard had said earlier, begin to have some discussion with these providers to see. What is your plan? How are you going to do it? And the big picture is that if you don't, we're going to begin to look at how we can do it ourselves. Basically saying, guys, if y'all don't get on the ball doing something about it, then we're going to start doing something about it ourselves. And when we decide to do something about it, in all honesty, the only way you're going to have that leverage to do that is to say you don't have this area anymore. Either this provider has a as a third party provider or in a public partner, public private partnership with Lowndes County, this is their area. Whatever that case may be and how that turns out to be, it's just some discussion that we need to give direction to uh, Mr. Pritchard and his staff to begin to look further into that and begin to give us you know, more and more information to see where we'll be at tomorrow. And so what are the opportunity zones uh, and the advanced uh, components that DCA said they're offering for opportunity zones in respect to rock band. Well, um, that could be impacted by the court case as to whether or not we are in compliance with DCA. Where the money is available. Because I, I, I think about a year or so when we talked about opportunities on I know DC was offering funds uh, for rural areas that didn't have internet, you needed broadband, and so forth. And we identified some of those areas. I didn't know if we had to see some of those funds. Thank you, that's good. Well, I mean, there's so many headings on municipality, broadband, local government. service provided by your local governments. I mean, but 
it sounds like there were a few who, who saw this back long ago and started putting fiber in the crown. And then, yeah, when they're buried in the transmission lines and the water lines and they're dropping fiber, and then all of a sudden they realize, hey, we've got a problem, but we've also got a solution that maybe we didn't even realize we had. And so now they're offering it basically as a government service. There's article after article. So I would uh, ask y'all if you want to. There's a couple more items that Paige has that on the agenda before we get to gold setting. Do you want to take a break or come back and do those and then go into the goals? Yes, a break always takes precedence over everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mark, how often do you?